This week's edition of Church Media Design TV is sponsored by Print Management Solutions. Welcome to another edition of Church Media Design TV Tips, Tricks, and How To For You, the Church Media Designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and I am joined every week by my favorite bobbleheaded friends. They might psych you out in the end, but we got Sean and Gus from Psych, which unfortunately only has a couple weeks left. We got Little Whitey, we got Colonel Sanders, and of course, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord Most High. Well, in this week's edition, we're going to learn how to take a principle from After Effects and apply it to Photoshop, because sometimes different tools can do some things that other tools can't, or they just don't do it as easily. So we're going to take the track mat idea and uh, function that they have inside After Effects and do that inside Photoshop, so all you Photoshoppers can take advantage of that, and I think it's a really helpful thing when designing. As well as we got a ton of great resources, um, and we got some news about a huge new software release and some cool demos from that as well as we have some awesome poker inspiration yeah poker you know why because I'm headed to Las Vegas me and my wife are actually headed out to Las Vegas to hang out with my brother and sister-in-law and their new daughter so I get to see my little niece and it's gonna be a great time while we're out there I'll get to check out Central Christian Church where my brother works and we're gonna see Cirque du Soleil and hang out with the family so all that to say, we're not going to have an episode next week, but we got a whole ton in store today. So if my favorite bobbleheaded friends are ready, let's get into it. Well, we got some big news. Cinema 4D has come out with version 12, their newest version of their software. And Cinema 4D is the uh, 3D modeling program of choice for most After Effects artists. It seems to integrate the best, but it's one of many uh, different 3D modeling softwares out there. But it allows you to do some things, some really cool stuff pretty easily. And so that's the power behind it. Um, it's not a cheap program by any means. They actually are having a summer sale right now that you can get a discount on it and then you pay a little extra to get the upgrade so you can get version 12 when it comes out. Um, but Nick Campbell over at Grayscale Gorilla um, just did a post and he's huge into Cinema 4D and does some great tutorials on it. So he actually did this walkthrough, what's new in Cinema 4D uh, version 12. Um, and talked about a few different things. One of the things that he talked about is the new dynamics that are involved in it. So as you can see here, this is a, a illustration of springs and connectors, and you really can't see the springs there, but you can see how easily they work together and how you know you set up the scene and it just goes the same. Uh, one of my favorite ones, and I think the funniest one, is the new soft body dynamics um, when he poofs up and you know becomes cool and stuff and then we also have this uh, connector and hinges one where you can see how you can get stuff all connected together um, an interesting one is the motors uh, uh, illustration and so all of these different demos that you're seeing right now are actually set up in advance and then they just say go and they're actually doing all of this dynamics for you you're not there's no animation involved here besides saying this is a motor and it does this thing and then go um, and then the last one of the ragdoll dynamics and seeing Nick fly around like a crazy man. So if you want to check out more about this one, you can head over to um, grayscalegorilla.com and check out that full uh, tutorial where he kind of walks through some of that stuff, as well as he talks about linear and nonlinear lighting and how um, uh, nonlinear or linear lighting helps things look a little bit more realistic. Um, so there's some really cool stuff. There's going to be a lot more coming out soon. He did a live broadcast on it as well. So a whole ton to look forward to. So check out Cinema 4D version 12. Well, let's reach into the stockpile and grab some great resources for you and your church. And the first one comes from a church, Church on the Move. They have started a website, just like many churches have, and I think it's a really cool trend that churches are sharing the resources they have. Um, so Life Church TV is doing this with Open Life Church TV. 
Southeast Christian is doing this with StuffIcanUse.com. I try to put a lot of stuff that we do for our church up on CMD. And now uh, Church on the Move is doing this with seeds.churchonthemove.com. Now you can check out the website. They have a ton of different stuff here. You can see they have artwork, video drama, resources, conferences, um, and they have a ton of different stuff here. So let's check out the series. They have it broken up into stuff for adults, for kids, for students. Um, and they have some really, you know, great looking artwork. And some of the things come with videos and um, artwork and messages and, you know, everything. Some of it, you know, comes with a little less. And everything's really well produced. There's really high quality to it all. And the best part is that all the PSD files, all of those things, you can edit those and change the text out and alter the title. Um, but it's just a really cool resource that they're providing as well as the video section. You know, they have different videos in here, including lyrics videos, um, some, you know, just uh, mini movies, that kind of thing. Uh, Dad Life they did uh, over Father's Day was a hilarious movie. Um, but the other thing is they actually have some motion backgrounds in here. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff in here and they keep adding more and more to it. And their heart behind it is to help the church out. They know they've been resourced, so they want to resource everyone else, which I think is just awesome. So uh, check out seeds.churchonthemove.com. Our next one is actually from uh, Ben Armit, who runs the Story Conference. He used to be with Catalyst. He also does uh, the whiteboard sessions and um, is big time into coaching and helps do coaching. And uh, last year he started this, and this year there's a new website up for Dream Year, which is uh, coaching throughout the year to help one person accomplish one dream in one year. And so there's a bunch of great stories on here, and it's just kind of inspiring to hear about this. Our church is getting into some big time coaching things and making that a big part of who we are. Um, and I just think that's a great way. It's, you know, coaching is this term that everyone's throwing around, but it's really basically what Jesus did. He sat down with a limited number of people, shared life on life with them, and helped teach and guide them along the way. So the last one is from You the Designer, and, and this is a design website. They have all sorts of different stuff, but this one caught my eye. It's 40 plus textures um, of paper. Um, so there's crumpled paper and dark crumpled paper and old paper and you know all sorts of stuff. And so these are all high quality free textures that you can use. And today during our tutorial, we're going to be using these to, uh, textures to show you how to you know make a quick design. And I think you're going to kind of see the power of using textures in your design. So um, check out you the designer. Check out Dream Year as well as make sure to go sign up for an account and get a bunch of great resources from C seeds.churchonthemove.com. Well, let's take a minute to say thank you to our sponsor of Print Management Solutions. They have the solution to your print needs. We use them all the time. I actually worked with them on their brand new website that's going to be coming out soon. So look forward to that with tons of info about what they provide and how they can help save time and money and energy and eliminate hassles as well as eliminate waste because uh, we actually waste so much less paper and so much less ink because we're not doing four different versions printed off because colors didn't turn out right or uh, you know we had problems with something in the printer and so it was smudging stuff. We don't have any of those issues anymore. So check out Print Management Solutions. You can click on the sign up button and enter all your information and make sure to uh, let them know that you heard about it from churchmediadesign.tv. So check out printmanagementsolutions.biz. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, make track mats inside Photoshop, which really isn't possible. It's a feature in After Effects, and basically what a track mat is inside After Effects is it uses the grayscale value of a layer, so it takes a you know black to white values from a layer and uses that to set transparency of another layer. Um, and so I'll show you real quickly inside After Effects how we would do this. So as you can see here, we have our track mat text. And I want to use one of these uh, textures. I actually went and downloaded a few different textures um, from that free texture file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just pull this texture into the timeline. And you can see, you know, it's this big old giant thing. And just so you can understand it a little bit better, first I'm going to go to Effects. 
I'm going to right click, I'm going to do a color correction, and I'm going to do tint. That's just going to turn it to a black and white image. Now under this track mat area, I can actually say use the luminance value or use the alpha value. I'm going to use the luminance value of, of this layer. And now you can see it's actually, it looks like it's just chopped it inside there, but it's actually setting transparency. So to see this, I'm just going to do a new solid and I'm going to make this solid, you know, maybe a red color. And we'll pull this behind. And now you can see that it's actually, you know, dropping and creating transparency in that layer. Now the cool thing is we can actually go in instead of just tinting, we can do color correction, we can do some levels to that, uh, to that graphic. And we can start to, you know, change the way, you know, we can have it disappear a little bit more. And we've done animation with this in the past where, you know, it really, uh, brings the text on and it's a cool way to kind of dissolve it in. So that's a track mat inside of After Effects. Pretty easy to do. Now let's jump over to Photoshop. So inside Photoshop you can see we have track mat text again and so we're going to take that same texture. We're going to just drag it into the composition here. I'm going to do uh, Command or Control T and that's going to allow me to do a free transform of this layer just because I want to scale it down just a little bit. So now we have this layer scaled down. I'll uh, zoom back in here. And now we can actually try apply this as a track map. Now your first thought would be to Alt or Option click between the layers and you would think that maybe that's a track mat. Well, it's not a track mat. It's actually a alpha mat. It's using the alpha channel from your text to set, you know, uh, what's visible of this layer one. Now that's cool and it looks nice, but it's not transparency and you could mess around with blending modes, but again, it's still not true transparency. So we want to set transparency. So I'm going to undo that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, select all and then I'm going to do a copy and I'm going to shut this layer off. Then I'm going to flip over into quick mask mode. Now quick mask mode is down here underneath your color area and I'm just going to paste that image back in. And you can see we got some weird light red stuff going on and that was actually us pasting that texture in as a selection is what you can actually paint selections in quick mask mode. Now I'm going to return out of quick mask mode and you'll see we have a selection going on here. And now I'm going to add a layer mask for track map. And you can see that our texture has been applied as a uh, track map to this layer. So now we could go in and uh, you know maybe make our background uh, some you know light brown color or something like that. So we'll just take our paint bucket and fill it with this light tan. And then we can uh, you can see that our color is changing in the background. We also can apply. Let's apply a color overlay to this. So yeah, we we don't really love red, but we like a dark brown. That looks okay. So we can start messing around in here. And the other thing you can actually do, just like After Effects, is you can alter the way that track mat looks. So on this layer, you can see what's highlighted right now. The text is highlighted. I'm going to highlight the actual track mat. And I'm going to do com uh, Command or Control L, and that's going to pull up my levels. And now I can actually start messing with my levels, and I can start altering this track mat. So I can add more or less in and you know I can start to get some interesting effects going on in here which I think is a pretty cool uh, effect. Also you can unlink this and I'm going to just grab my move tool with um, the track mat selected and I can actually move this track mat around and find oh, I kind of like it right there or maybe this is a little bit better. Um, you will start to see the edge so that's why we're totally losing it but you know you can mess around and get the track mat looking the way that you want it to in the way that you think looks best. Um, so let's go do this exact same thing and let's add a texture background to it. So I'm just going to grab this paper texture, bring this in. We're actually going to need to scale this one up. So Command or Control T, I'm just going to scale this guy up. And let's again do the same thing. So we're going to copy that, shut it off, go into quick mask mode, and I'm going to paste that. I'm going to come back out of quick mask mode, 
I'm going to apply this as a track mat for layer zero down here. So uh, we'll apply that. And you can actually see the checkerboard because we have transparency underneath. So we actually need to add another layer underneath. And we'll make this like a, a darker, darker tan color. And we'll just fill that in the background there. Maybe we want to make it a little bit darker yet. Fill that. Okay, so we're starting to get some cool texture in the background. Again, we'll do some levels to this track mat to make it look the way we want it to so it can pop a little bit more. So let's get rid of more of it by bringing up the black values. So this is, you can start to see how it's disappearing. Um, and we can mess with the gray values to make it a little more natural. Um, so we're starting to get, get something interesting in here. By no means do I think this looks great. This is just a start for this tutorial. So um, as you can see, you can easily apply track mats inside Photoshop, you know, by copy and pasting into that quick mask mode. Hopefully you can use this to make some cool designs. You can do a lot of things with this. You don't just have to use textures. You can use images or whatever you want to apply that, um, that alpha value to it. And again, remember that's true alpha values. It's not a texture applied to it. It's applying alpha values to that layer. So um, hopefully you guys can use that tip along the way in your designs. Well, this week's inspiration, as I said at the top of the show, is all about poker. It's from Poker Stars, and it's an awesome video that uses tracking inside After Effects on some really great looking footage and throw some stats in there, and it's a really compelling piece. Um, I'm doing it in honor of heading out to Vegas. Hopefully, I won't lose it all. I will be back, I promise. Um, and so, uh, it'll be a great time, but check out this video about Poker Stars. Poker is all about numbers. Over 35 million players. 225 countries. More than 1.8 million hands every hour. Over 100,000 free-to-enter tournaments every day. The best numbers are found at PokerStars.net. Learn and play for free at the world's largest poker site. Well, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Church Media Design TV. Hopefully you guys learned something today. Um, I know that I learned something when I was learning about these track mats, and I know it's going to make life a lot easier for some of you out there. So um, hopefully you guys can use that in your designing daily, as well as using all those other resources, checking out some inspiration, and using that to inspire you in some new designs. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave uh, comments on the show note page at cmd.tv slash 113 uh, as well as you can email me brad at churchmediadesign.tv find me on twitter.com slash cmdtv um, there's a ton of different ways you know you can find me on facebook um, as well as i'm on ping if you really care about the whole apple itunes thing you can go to cmd.tv slash ping and that will take you right to my profile so if you're into that i'm just I got it just in case people care about it i think it's going to be a flop but that's my own personal opinion We'll see what really happens in the future. So as for me and my favorite bobbleheaded friends, we're saying see you later.